Good evening, everyone. So let me express my, my gratitude to, for you to be here because I know that was a huge effort for each of you to be here. The traffic today was not so good, but let's make this night very productive because the idea here is not only to talk to you directly, it's exactly to present you a tool that could help you in terms of a self-knowledge. Self-knowledge, sometimes it's quite fuzzy, it's difficult to see, it's difficult to understand. And the idea here is to present that kind of uh, tool that we use for risk assessments, compliance, as he mentioned. And I just make this analogy here. So it's gonna be pretty simple. And feel free to raise your hand if you've got any questions. Marcia, could you repeat that thing? I can repeat, okay? So one thing that I like to emphasize here is, uh, is to give us a motivation to study. It's not only to present the tool, but give us a motivation to study. There's a lot of material in the internet, a lot of books. And if we do that thing, we are gonna follow the, the second precept, which is educate ourselves, okay? Love each other is the number one. Educate ourselves is the second. So that's what we are doing here and congratulations to you all. So let's start a warm up here for this self-knowledge and self-assessment. This picture right here, I love sunset, I love sunrises. So think for yourself what you can see here. You can think as a sunrise or you can think as a sunset. Okay, keep it the answer for you. I think each of you, maybe 50% will think it's a sunrise 50% will think it's a sunset. Now think the reason that you're thinking it's a sunset or it's a sunrise. Why do you see here? There's no right answer on that. So just think, I'm thinking it's a sunset because I'm at the end of the day, I'm gonna rest, I'm gonna have a good night, and oh, I think it's a, it's a sunrise because it's a new day, new opportunities, and uh, new work to do. So try to think to yourself and see what you can think here. Don't mention it depends. It depends if I'm facing to east or west. Don't tell that. Just mention to you, I can see a sunset here, I can see a sunrise. It's just a warm up. There's no right answer. You want to answer? No. There's no right answer. There is no so it's just a warm up for the self-knowledge and the self-assessment. Just for us to think about, think yeah. Okay. This is the uh, classification that Kardec presented to us in the Spirit's book. I will not go deeper on that thing because this is not the objective of this, uh, this lecture. But let's, let's say, does any of you here uh, have a question on what order are you placed? Feel free to say. Who is in the third order? Can you raise your hand? Third order. Third. Second order. I want to see that. Second order. No one? You in the second order? Good guy. First order. Is there anyone in the first order? No, I can't see. So, if you, if you got a, a question in what order are you, are you are you inserted? Just think if you face some kind of envy. If you think I'm pride, so I'm very pride. If I'm lazy, so if you think that thing for just a minute, welcome to the club, you are in the third order. Okay? Along with 99.9999% of everybody here on earth. Okay? Good news is that you see this big arrow right here? We are going that direction. Believe it or not, we are going that direction. All of us. Make sense here? That direction. We are going to be pure spirits, but we need to go step by step. It takes longer. But it depends on our own efforts to do this way here. Okay? So if you want to go deeper on this hierarchy, I suggest you to go to the questions 100 and 113 of the Book of Spirits. Then, Adek presented additional 
uh, classes inside each order. And then you can see, oh, I'm here. I'm just asking about that because the first time I was introduced to this hierarchy here, someone asked the same thing to me. In what order you think you are? So I make an exclusion. So I'm not so pure, of course. But I'm not so bad. So I'm a good. And so the guy came to me and said, no, 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 you need to study. Because a good spirit is something much more than what you're thinking. And then I start to read those questions and, okay, it makes sense for me. Putting you on exactly. exactly. Back to the third. Back to the third order, and let's work. No, it's not. Okay. So, types of transformation. For something to be transformed, so let's get the gem as an example. You can see the, the unpolished rock over there. You cannot see the beauty of that rock. Okay? The beauty is there. But you cannot see. The rock would need an external effort, someone to polish the rock, to bring the beauty of the rock. So if the rock stays there, it will stay there forever. If no one gets the rock and polish, it will stay there forever. Which is not so good because the rock is depending for someone to polish it. In our case, it's different. We don't need, ex we don't need external efforts. We just need internal efforts to make this uh, the orange way that I presented in the previous slide. And what is the key for this internal effort? The key is the self-knowledge. So internal effort to understand what I'm doing here, why I'm doing that thing. This self-knowledge will give you the key to evolute here. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Let's move up. Joana de Angelis. Uh, Divaldo Franco wrote that thing. Joana de Angelis is uh, his mentor. And jo Joana de Angelis in the psychological series, she presented very clear in this book, The Self-Discovery. It's available at, at, at Amazon. If anyone would like to buy and read that thing, it's a very, very good book to understand the self-knowledge and self-discovery. And I just tracked that phrase, that part of the book for here. So she emphasized, what she emphasized very clear here. We don't know how to identify or we don't want to identify. We avoid that thing. Our current evolution state to understand our needs and better drive our own energies. So we don't understand. We are not doing the efforts to understand that. Based on that thing, we linger in the initial phase of suffering. So do you know anyone in the, on the planet Earth that is not facing difficulties or faced difficulties in the past? No, we are here in the initial phase of suffering. Instead of performing the libertarian effort to ascend, leading to health and happiness. So if we could summarize that thing is that self-knowledge, your own efforts, it's only depending on us. We are not depending on anyone from external. It's only on us. So I would suggest, if you got a chance, get that book, read that thing. It's a pretty good one. So besides Joanna, Alain Kardec also brought that question, brought that, uh, that topic in the question 19. Question 19, he asked it to the spirits, what is the most effective, most effective, what is the best one that will provide us results for guaranteeing self-improvement and resisting to the attraction of wrongdoing? So pretty simple. And the spirits, look at the answer that the spirits gave to us. A philosopher of antiquity. It's very, very far behind in time. Look at that. This phrase, no tie self, was presented in the temple of Apollo in, in the in the Delphos Island in Greece. And it was carved in a rock something 700 before Christ. So it's pretty old. That message was provided to us 
carved in a rock a long time ago, and we are still struggling on executing that thing. So Kardec faced that answer, fine, we are good. Okay, give me that thing, but how can I do that? Give me that. Teach me how to do that. What is the most difficult to, to achieve? Uh, note thyself. How can we acquire that? So, St. Augustine raised his hand. I can answer that. Pretty simple. Let me give you my example. That's what St. Augustine said. At the end of each day, it's not at the end of the week, it's not at the end of the year. So now we are approaching the New Year's. It's very common for us at the New Year's Eve, oh, what I did this year, make a, 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 a resolution for the next year. So St. Augustine is, is saying to us, at the end of each day, before you go to sleep, just refresh your memory and tell yourself what you did, what you did right, what you did wrong. If everything that you did, if, if, was, if was addressing you, what is going to be your reaction? So just refresh your memory every day. I think everybody here, uh, all of us are sleeping at night, right? So just spend five minutes before you go to the bed, when you're doing your prayer, just refresh your memory. What I did, what I did today? I was driving. Someone crossed in front of me, and I scream on him. Is this right? If, if it was you who was in the car, do you know what happened to this guy who was driving this car? If the guy was hurrying to a hospital for some reason, so you don't know what happened to him. If it was you and that thing, do you like to have someone uh, screaming on you? Of course not. So think about you. Don't think about others. So pretty simple what he said to us. But we perceive that Santa Agustin uh, gave us a good clue on that self-knowledge, self self-assessment, and self-discovery. It's a continuous process. It's not something that I'm doing today. Next year, I'm not going to do that thing. No, you should do, you should do the, the self-knowledge in a continuous process. And what is this continuous process? Continuous process here, right? First of all, define the scope. What I want to improve. I want to improve myself on what? So that's the scope. What is the analysis? Is the analysis when you start to gather data. So let me give you an analogy with a, with a physician. When you got a pain in your knee, you go to a physician and tell him, I've got a pain in my knee. That's your scope. My problem is in my knee. So the physician will send you to an x-ray or to an MRI to take pictures, take the exam, blood exam. Using this data that he collected from the analysis, the physician will do an evolution, evaluation of the, the situation. Sorry about that. Evaluation of the situation. And then send you for treatment, right? Give you some medicine, some physical therapy. And then you're going to be back to the physician say, I'm fine. No, I'm still hurting. So another exam will do. So it's a continuous process. So the same way a self-knowledge is a continuous process. You define the scope. What I would like to improve. I would like to improve my, uh, let's say I'm very angry and when I'm in the traffic. I'm not, I don't have patience in the traffic, patience in the traffic. So what I should do to improve that? So that's your scope. Make an analysis, do an evaluation, and do a self-treatment. What I should do to practice that, to improve? It's a continuous process. It's not so simple, but it's an exercise. Okay, Marcio, you tell me that thing, but how can you manage and monitor this continuous self-knowledge process in the current incarnation. Tell me more. Tell me. Tell me. I know what Santa Agustin said to me, but I like to monitor. I like to know if I'm going to the right direction. So that's the tool that I'm going to introduce to you today. It's a self-assessment using a three-level approach. I'm an engineer. So when, you, when we have a big problem, as an engineer, we try to chop the problem into minor problems. And then I can manage this minor problem. I can manage the other minor problem. And then I integrated everything. That's an engineering process. What we are going to use right here is a self-assessment using a three level. Let me introduce you those levels. 
first level, objectives. Those are examples. I'm just giving you as an example. You can define your own objectives, but don't define your objectives. Ah, I would like to become rich. I would like to win a lottery. No, this is not an objective because you are searching for a, for a pleasure in a short time. This is a permanent one. Wellness and moral progress. Think uh, in your objectives in terms of uh, eternal life. What are gonna be your eternal life? What you need as an objective to reach a comfortable et et eternal life. So in that case, I, I put an example here as a two objectives, wellness and moral progress. Us, while incarnated, we always search for wellness, right? I need to, I don't have a, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna have a disease, I don't wanna, I don't wanna fight with each other. And moral progress, we are all good, right? We are all good. So, but we can improve, right? And those two terms, wellness and moral progress, it's not new as well. I think most of you, if you are familiar with stadiums and Olympics, Probably you saw this phrase here. Men sano in corpore sano. It's, it's Latin. And actually, it was a phrase created by this poet here, Juvenalis, in the century, in the second century. It's pretty old. And actually, I don't know the reason. They deleted the first and the most important word in this phrase. They just put men sano in corpore sano. And they remove the first one right here, which means pray. Pray is your connection with God. So you're asking God, please help me on having a health mind and a health body. So I don't know the reason they removed that thing. They should have kept that thing in the, in the phrase, pray for a health mind and a health body. Everybody's aligned here with the, the objectives, okay? Let's go deeper and let's move to the next level. The, le the next level uh, are the systems. The systems are basically the support to reach the objectives. Once again, this is an example. So we can see here that the system is not the health system that you can see in the, <laughs> in the streets, in the hospitals. It's a health here. Health is support your wellness and also peace is support your wellness. So if you've got both, probably you've got a good wellness in terms of your body. And the moral progress, what will support, what systems will support your moral progress? Life experience, your friction, okay, in the society, and the fraternity. The way that you are being in, uh, Benevolent, the way that you are being indulgent, the way that you are providing charity, the way that you are doing your forgiveness. So everything is related to that, okay? So those are the systems that are supporting the wellness. Any questions here? Second level, we are chopping a big problem, right? This is the second level of assessment. Second level, when you got, okay, I wanna know myself. First level, objective. Second level, systems. Let's go now to the third level. Okay. And the third level, what, what is the third level? The actions. What I need to do. What I need to do, right? That's, that's my, my question. That's the million dollar question. Exactly. What I need to do <laughs> to make the health running, to make the peace running, to make the life experience running, the fraternity running as well. What I need to do, what are the actions? Let's see what are the actions here. Okay. In the health side, we can say that it's gonna be feed yourself properly, right? That's one thing that you should do to become, to make your, your health running. Take care of your body, right? That's another, another action that you need to take. It's important, besides we are not we're not talking about money, but maintain a financial stability. Because if you don't have that thing, you will not have peace, right? Intellectual development. The reason that I highlighted here, I'm gonna tell you later. So life experience. 
So review your own attitudes. How are you treating others? How am I planning my life with others? Interacting with family, friends, and society, that's the friction, right? You need to polish your rock. You need that friction. So this one is supporting the life experience and fraternity and practice of love and charity that will support the fraternity. So those are the actions that will support those systems, and those systems will support the objectives, right? So let's see some examples here of what I said, just to review and uh, make that visualization here a little bit easier for you. So feed yourself, I discussed it. Take care of the body, that's pretty simple for us because that's the material side. Right? The material side, it's easy for us to understand. This side right here, the spiritual side, that's a little more complicated, but it's possible. It's possible. Look at that. Assess your own attitudes. It's a self-experiment. We are experimenting every day. Every day we are, we've got different situations and we are experimenting that. Sensitivity. How, how is my sensitivity for others? How is my sensitive for me? Right? Self-forgiveness. Self-control. Oops. Self-control. Uh, am I using my self-control? Are we using the self-control? So I'm playing soccer. Someone hit me. So what I should do? Should I scream on him? Should I fight on him? Of course not. Get his helmet and hit somebody else. <laughs> Sometimes you need that, right? <laughs> well, that's what we just saw recently. Yeah, right. So interact with family. What are going to be the, 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 the actual actions? It's going to be harmony. So let's live in harmony. Let's be the one who will not amplify the problem. If there is a problem, let's not amplify. Let's try to reduce the problem. Friendship, a real friendship, not a, a, a fake friendship, just to a smile or something. No, let's do a, a real friendship. And solidarity. Let's be solidarity to, your, to the others. So the guy crossing in front of you, maybe he needs help. He doesn't need you to scream on him. Maybe he needs help. Just leave him enter because he needs to go there. Right? Practice of love and charity. So charity, you can see that the tree, benevolence, indulgence, forgiveness. Oops, once again. So the tree here that supports charity and love, gratitude and patience, right? Let's appreciate everything, even the enemies. We need to make gratitude for them because they are facing a problem for us. They are, they are, they are providing a problem to us, right? It's the friction that we need to evolve. Okay, the last one that I left for the end, it's the intellectual development. I said in the very beginning, it's a motivation for you to study, right? That's the idea here, not only to present a thing, but to motivate. And you, we can see here that the intellectual development, it's a link between the moral side and the, and the material side. It's the link. So what you need with the intellectual development, wisdom, rational faith. So you believe, but you believe thinking. So I understand now why I should have this faith, why I should pray. So that's a rational faith. Study all the time. As much as we study, I like to say, we increase the sphere of knowledge, right? As much we study. But if we increase the sphere of knowledge, we increase the area to contact the ignorance. So as much as we study, as much as we need to study. Because you are discovering new areas, oh, I need to study, I need to study. So, right? And justice. Let's try to be justice all the time. But we can develop the justice based on intellectual development. We understand. We study. We understand the justice. Any questions here? Those three levels. How we chop it. This huge problem of self-knowledge. And now, Mars, you're going to say, OK, you chop at everything. Initially, I had just one problem, self-knowledge. Now you created a lot of other problems for me. Help me again. How can we do with that thing? Remember that I mentioned in the beginning, not in the beginning, in the middle of this presentation about this continuous process? 
to make this continuous process here manageable, we need to have metrics, right? So let's do metrics here. So let me give you for the material side because this is easy for us to understand. So let's see, you can do a self-assessment in your, feed yourself properly. I'm not eating so well, let me give a six in a scale from zero to 10. Take care of the body, oh, I'm not so good, I can improve, it's seven. Financial stability, oh, I'm spending so much money now, let me give a four. Intellectual development, oh, I'm spending more time in Facebook than reading a book. So let me give a five, right? So, okay, those numbers here, it's a self-assessment. Easy to do, right? It's easy to do, to say that zero, 10, what is my, my grade here? So let's make this analysis bottom up. For example, health. What is supporting health? We've got three arrows there, right? Three arrows here, one, two, three. What is the, the grade that you, that you gave, that we, that we gave to the feed yourself properly? Six, seven, and five. So if you take the average, so your health will be something 6.0. Let's do the same for peace. So peace is supported by four arrows right here. The one that you graded as a six, the other one that you graded as a seven, four and five. So the average will be 5.5, right? You measure that thing. So let's move up again. Oops. Wellness, using the same thing. You reach six here for health, 5.5. So your average here, it's 5.75, okay? So I measure myself. Now you can create your own strategy. I would like to improve here. What I need to do to improve here? So, and, uh, 10 being the best zero, yeah, zero and 10, like any grade in the, right. in the, in the school. Right. Zero is bad, 10 is good. And then you create your own strategy. I would like to improve. What I need to do to improve my health? Mm -hmm. I need to improve my, this one and this one. What I need to improve my peace? I need to improve here, 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 and here. Okay, and then automatically you're going to improve right here as well. So, this side right here, it's different. It's not different, but you can do your self-assessment here, right? How can you assess your own attitude? Think about you. Am I good? Am I bad? What is my grade? Where I can improve? The motivation here is for you to assess yourself. So, how, uh, how can you grade your attitudes today? Like uh, Santo Agostin said. How was my attitude today in a scale from zero to 10? Can I improve something? Yes, I can. Give a grade here. So my family, are you facing some issues with your family? So let me see how can I, let's see, you've got a family of 10. How many of them you've got problems? Four? Maybe it's a four here, right? You can give a score of four here and your friends and society. So it's your own assessment here. It's a self-assessment. So if you, if you give grades right here in those three actions right here, that's not so difficult to score, right? Because it's, it's just a small part. If you give those numbers right here, you can also move up and then identify how you are currently in the moral progress. And you can create your own strategy to improve. I'm not saying that you're gonna improve everything in a row, but maybe I can improve right here. I can improve right here. That will improve a little bit your moral progress at the end. So that's the overall idea. And how can we develop the activities? So once again, think about the continuous process. St. Augustine saying that you need to do every night. So the way that we should do is persistence. I'm not saying discipline, discipline, discipline. I'm saying persistent, persistent, persistence. And persistent is different than insistent. Let me give you this example from Thomas Edison. I think most of you know uh, electric light. Electric light was invented by Thomas Edison. And Thomas Edison made around a thousand, a thousand unsuccessful attempts. And when a reporter was challenging him, 
How do you feel and fail a thousand times? This answer here that he gave was perfect. I didn't fail a thousand times. The light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. So us was invented by God for a thousand steps. We are evoluting. I actually improve it each step by learning from previous steps. So, so we learn from previous steps. An insistent guy is the guy that insists in the mistake. I'm doing this mistake, I'm insisting on that thing. A persistent is different, I'm doing different. I'm improving, I learned it from the previous one, and then I'm improving. Make sense? And, and, the, and the message in the beginning of the, the, the message was exactly the aligned. It's but pretty aligned. It was incredible. Yeah. I, I was thinking here that was pretty aligned yeah. with discipline and persistence. And and the willpower. Well, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so, beautiful. Yeah. so that's the, the tool that I suggest you. Create your own tree. That's a tree. It's a risk tree. Risk analysis we use, it's one of the techniques to make a risk analysis, basically. And you can create your own tree. Define your objectives. Define the system that will support the objectives. And define the activities that will support the systems. And then you can make your self-assessment, create your metric, create your strategy, and start, to start a self-improvement. Right? So we are almost on top of the time. So let me bring this final phrase for you uh, that was provided by Francisco Cândido Xavier. So though nobody can go back and make a new beginning, anyone can start over and make a new ending. So that's what we, we are here. So we are doing a new ending, right? So in terms of changes, the spiritual mentors teach me that I must not forget those relating primarily to improve myself. Don't try to improve the others. First, you need to improve yourself, right? It's like the, the mask that you've got in the, in, in the airplane. They all the time, so put the mask first on you, and then you try to save the other. Because you need to improve yourself first. How can you improve someone if you don't know yourself? So peace for all. Thanks for the, for the opportunity. Thank you. One final thing. Yeah. So uh, most of you, I think, know Kardec Radio. So if you don't have time to study or if you don't time, have time to, to read, so look at the traffic that we had today. If you turn on in your cell phone, your palm of your hand, turn on the Kardec Radio. It's in English. You can listen a lot of information here. So nowadays, we don't have an excuse to study. If you don't have time doing something, you are driving some time. So put that thing. So just put the radio, listen to the radio. And that's a, a good suggestion. It's free, by the way. Thank you.